Hey, welcome to Knitting Samurai Plus One, episode four. Rain, rain, go away. <laughs> it is pouring outside right now. Um, it is currently Friday, October 14th, around 3.30 p.m. And I have a few minutes to myself, so I thought I would record an episode. So, I know I've looked better, but at least I have time to sit and talk to you. So I thought rather than primping too much, I would just be here and chat. <laughs> so I hope your knitting has gone well these past few days. I guess it's almost, it's like a narrow week anyways. So it is October 14th, the um, Friday. It's like Rain Beck Eve. And sad to say, I am home. We are not going to Rhinebeck. Beck. Um, Last weekend we had quite a bit of activity and it threw Roland off his schedule and we paid for it for a couple days afterwards trying to get him back onto the schedule that he was comfortably on and it's like it's very predictable you know these three hour chunks of eat, burp, play, then sleep and he got off it by going too long without eating or without sleeping and so then he became a terror. So we're back onto it now and it's going well and neither one of us want to risk being away from home for several days and probably getting him off that schedule again. We're a little too gun shy at this point to be like, oh yeah, we'll, we'll go back to it, we'll, we'll take it on. So as much as I would love to be at Rhinebeck, I'm not there. It is sort of breaking my heart a little bit. But the consolation prize is that Stitches East is next weekend, and that is a day trip from my house. And we all agreed that, yep, we'll get in the car and we'll go. So one day, we'll see how we can, I'm fairly certain we can handle that versus, you know, three days, two nights in a hotel, strange environment. Like, it was just too much. He's too new. He can't handle that. So. Um, coming up on tomorrow he'll be six weeks old and when you think about it like doing something next weekend versus this weekend adds another week to his life it's like one-sixth he's one-sixth older like that's crazy if I think about right now I'm 30 if I'm one-sixth older I'm 35 like that's a huge chunk of time in terms of his development and his life so far so no Ryan back yes stitches east which I've never been to because it's the weekend after Rhinebeck and usually I'm tired and I'm yarned, not yarned out, but definitely the uh, the bank is dry. So we'll go check it out and see what it's about. So um, that's why we're here instead of there. So yeah, and that was a long way around to talking about knitting. So let's jump into it. Um, First up, I'm only going to show you the things that were actively worked on this week, nothing that was left off the needles, so, or not left off the needles, but left out of my knitting life. So you're not going to see Steve's socks, and you're not going to see the uh, Melrose Peacoat, which the navy blue sweater I've been working on for myself, which is still called the Rhinebeck sweater. Um, but what you will see, and we'll start right off with it, thank you for all of your kind, oh my god, I can't believe you did that about the Veritas. Uh, turns out, I was, see here's how this is set up. See the chart, and then this is a different pattern down here. So when I looked and saw that the needle size was a 6 or 7, that was for the Hope sweater. That is not what I was knitting. I was on the correct needle size, thank god, sort of. Um, so the Veritas is by Julie Trice not Christian, not Teresa Chenoweth, like I started, like I said last week, and it is in fact knit on size, um, four, US four needles, so, <sighs> crisis averted there, I, it was two or three days later when I realized that, I looked on my Ravelry page, and was like, really? And then I clicked on the pattern link, and saw that it was listed as size fours there, so, um, it is, finished. I did persevere and knit on and finish it up. Um, so this is the Veritas cowl. It is knit with, I have no idea, Classic Elite Wool Bamboo, which is a 50-50 wool bamboo blend. It is knit in the exact colors of the pattern, 
that are called for. It's This pattern is actually from, oh, they don't say it on the top, from the um, Classic Elite Yarns booklet called Sanctuary. If you were looking for the pattern, that's where it is. Um, not going to put this on. My hair is a mess as it is. I'm extremely disappointed in this. Uh, I think I'd have to be a giraffe for that to make sense, that cowl length. It is huge. It is so long. Like, if I hold it up, here's where my, whatever that dent is in your throat, here, right? That's where my neck ends. This cowl goes all the way down to my bust. Like, it is exceedingly long, and even though I did knit this, did alter the pattern and start doing it on the flat instead of in the round, going back and forth right there, um, my ends are still not woven in. So that's what you're seeing there. Even though I did alter the pattern and do that, it doesn't make up for it. It spreads it out a little bit, but it's still all bunched up really tight on my neck, and you can't see any of the color work. Can you tell I'm completely disgusted with this? I uh, finished it and put it aside. So you will remember that the first mitt I knit was, um, I had to alter the pattern a bunch. It is very, very fitted and I think I added 15 or 20 extra stitches on a 40 stitch fingerless mitt just to get it, see, to fit me as it is. And this is the size large, there were two sizes. Um, yeah. So I have enough yarn according to the pattern to knit two sets of knits and a cowl. I'm not sure what to do. I'm not interested in knitting another one, another mitt that's this small because where I added the stitches I didn't really understand and I broke up the color work. You can see I ended up with this checkerboard effect where the flowers should have been connecting and instead there's a checkerboard through the middle so it throws off the pattern. Um, I don't know if I should knit another pair of mitts going up. I'm not knitting a second one of these because what's the point except to give it away. And someone who's not a knitter wouldn't necessarily see, notice that that, that the pattern is broken up by that checkerboard effect over there. Um, so maybe that's a possibility. Maybe I would knit a second one and give it away. Or do I knit a second cowl that's about that long and cut out all the extra repeats and add uh, all the extra rows and add probably two color repeats to it to get it to be drapey enough to fit? I'm not sure. I'm, uh, I definitely need to just set this pattern aside and do something else and it's really sad because I think I spent 70 bucks on the yarn for this and it's getting set aside and I'm not gonna wear it and I'm not gonna frog it because that's just not in my nature to be a frogger so here they are very sad going away for a while you'll probably see them again once I've calmed down a little bit but I'm rather annoyed with this pattern <laughs> at the moment so it's sad, it's not a happy FO, because the cowl is an FO, essentially. So, yeah, I don't know. And fingerless mitts never really make a lot of sense to me, so maybe I'll make a shorter cowl and then see if I have enough to do the mitts. I don't know. It wouldn't be nearly the time investment that the first one was, that's true. So, we'll think about it. I'll think, we'll see. Um, so there's the Veritas. Also on this, the needles this week are the, um, sorry, no glasses, Meandering Circular Ziggies by Bonnie Zink. Um, that's what this pattern is. I picked it up this week, or continued picking it up this week. I am about four rows from starting my one by one rib at the top. Um, I tried them on, and they're tight around the calf, so I am actually, I did omit a couple of the knit two together stitches on the last two pattern rows, because there's like a pattern row, and then there's just plain knit row, and then pattern row. So the last two pattern rows, I left them out thinking that would give me a little bit of calf shaping. Um, oh, and now that I'm saying that, I should have just left them off the back, not off the front. Oh well. Anyways. Um, yeah, 
So these are coming along. This is three used twisted and fiber in the Tweedles colorway, and I'm knitting these on 1.5 US needles, which is a 2.75 millimeter needle. So that's been my like back of the car knitting. Although we haven't gone out much this past week. I don't know why. We just have it. Um, the purple sock, purple hats for Click for Babies that I was knitting for Katie on Knitting on the Fly. I finished both of them. I think I had one in progress. So I did one and then I did a second one that had like three of the Florida leaf little things on them. Is it's coming to say hi? Um, so I'll throw in a picture. Right here. So those were finished and mailed off, so hopefully Katie will get those and pass them along. This is Is It, in case you're new. She's not. Um, she is our third youngest, our third cat, our youngest cat. She is a Devon Rex. Um, don't mind her girl bits. <laughs> She's a very sweet little girl. Very super affectionate. And her... Um, just because we're talking about her. Can you see her eyes? Is she looking at you? I can't tell. They are aqua. So she's a very special little Devon Rex. And we love her very much. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> she's so tiny. Um, I think Roland's twice her size. And the other two cats, Mac and Linus, are also Devon Rex. But they are um, old men. And so rather large compared to her. They're about twice her size. So. And is it is three and a half years old? So she's not a she's not a baby anymore. She's not a baby anymore. No, but she once was. She once was. So uh, those hats are done. What else do I have to show you? Um, I guess we're up to my. Just straight stockinette socks I've been working on. So these are also three used twisted and fiber. Three used twisted and fiber? Yeah. Um, this is the Harry Potter colorway. This was my first afterthought heel. Talked about it last time. So I have now done, woo, finished my toe increases and I am just starting that first yellow strip. So it's not very exciting. I know. But the, uh, this past week, the purple hats were my mindless knitting. The I'm holding a baby, and we're oh, like he strapped me in the baby hawk, and I can knit out here in stockinette. So that's what I was knitting. Girlfriend, what are you doing? I'm knit knitting with a baby. But now that those are done and gone, these are my next ones. So I can do quite a bit of stockinette up the foot. So. And then, the thing I'm most excited to show you about that I said I wasn't going to cast on until I finished with a Veritas, and really in my head I was done with a Veritas because I was so mad at it, um, I cast on a baby sweater for Roland, but not after doing a great deal of searching online, and then I actually like could not find a top-down, knit, flat, one-piece, yoked, fair isle, 18 month baby sweater. That's what I want. Is that a tall order? It turns out it is a tall order. Um, I looked and looked and looked online. I probably spent six hours looking for patterns to free pay anything in my library, anything anywhere. And then I finally was like, okay, I'm gonna go see Margo at the yarn shop and she's gonna tell me what to do because she knows all this stuff. Now remember, I had my yarn at this point. So I go in and I'm like, Margo, help, help, help. And she hands me Dale of Norway and we start going through their patterns. Their patterns are for um, fingering weight, their yarn, the baby all essentially. Fingering weight, knit on size twos, ones or twos. Um, and yes, they had fair isle yoked, but they were all bottom up and they were knit in the round one piece. I didn't want, I wanted a cardigan that's what I wanted so we looked at that and I said no this isn't exactly what I have in mind 
And so then she helps me with pull out the, oh, I wanted to show up. Oh, well. She pulls out Elizabeth Zimmerman's opinionated knitter and says, you know, you could use, you could adapt the uh, percentage sweater from in here. And here's the fair isle design for the yoke. You know, it could work. And so I take it home. I spent, I did several gauge swatches <laughs> before I actually got it right. So I tried to insert my own fair isle pattern instead of using the one from the book. And my gauge was actually off. I was calculating based on five stitches per inch, um, knitting on size sixes, five stitches per inch on size sixes, but I was actually getting six stitches per inch. So as you can see, this would make a lovely um, start of a mitten, but it definitely would not have been the collar, a very good collar for an 18 month old sweater. So you can see how wide that is. Yeah, that wasn't gonna work. So I pulled this off the needles, redid my numbers, redid my math and said, okay, um, and actually calculated my gauge, which it was six stitches per inch, which is what her pattern called for. So I said, why am I reinventing the wheel? I'll stick with Easy's um, color works, her charts, and I'll go forward with that. So stayed on size six needles. I am using the uh, pattern works Brenton. Brenton, yep. Yeah which is a 70% uh, superwash, 25% nylon, 5% alpaca yarn. It has a really nice halo to it. I don't know if you can see a little bit of halo going on there. Um, it has a great halo to it, and it's not the softest yarn I've ever used, but Fair Isle sweaters aren't typically that soft, and it's superwash. I don't know. I'm, I'm good with it. I'm not getting upset or worried about it. So that said, um, this Elizabeth Zimmerman sweater is knit as a in the round bottom up yoke sweater. So I have converted that to a top down flat yoked sweater. Are you following me? I don't know. Anyways, I'm stubborn. And I didn't, even though knitting in the round would be great, I didn't want to start at the bottom with the solid green section. I wanted to start at the fun part with, because you knit, yeah, no. I wanted to start with the fun part. <laughs> and I wanted it to be um, a cardigan. And I didn't want to steak. I just didn't. I've steaked before. There's nothing wrong with steaking. I just didn't want to do it. So this has been pretty much all I've worked on for the past two days. And you can see, I'm sorry, my needle is now too small for the size of the sweater. But I am 10 rows away from splitting off the sleeves. And you can see this collar is going to be much better sized. And it stretches way out for an 18 month old baby. Um, I will do a green button band down the front, the dark green. So see, I'll show it to you like this. Those are the colors I'm using. The light green is moss. The, there's a natural, a beige, and then a brown. And the brown is heathered as is the dark green. They're both heathered, if that makes a difference. And I'm really, really, really enjoying this sweater. So I am stoked I um, to figure it out. I because I don't have an 18 month old, I have a six week old. <laughs> I went and looked at some of the measurements from other people's patterns for 18 month old babies and found I needed a 23 inch chest um, to make my math work. It, I'm actually coming out with a 24 inch chest. It's fine, he's a big boy. He'll maybe wear it a little later. And if, um, yeah. So, and I'm actually thinking that since he's kind of big, 18 months, he'll probably be wearing this next September when he'll be a year or a little later. I think it'll make a great Christmas sweater for him to have on next year. It is very warm, <laughs> very, very warm. And I did flip through the book 
um, the opinionated knitter book, which I did not have, so I'm very glad to have now. Um, I think Knitting Without Tears is the only one of her books I don't have. So I'm slowly collecting them all. But anyways, flipping through it, I did find the pillbox hat, which I think is completely adorable. So I whatever section of this I like best, I'm going to insert that on the brim and so he'll have a little matching hat based on how much I have left because I'm definitely going to have some yarn left over afterwards. But yeah, it's really exciting. It is coming along. I am going to have this gorgeous little sweater for my wife. So we're up to about 200, a little over 200 stitches per round, which is not bad. And like I said, 10 rows until I split off for the arms. I'm not sure how much further, if I'll do the body or if I'll stop and do the sleeves next. So that'll be a surprise for you for next week. But yeah, there you go. Roland's Fair Isle baby sweater. I'm proud. <laughs> so um, that's what's going on in my knitting. If you are noticing and loving my shawl that I'm wearing, this is the Flamboyant Shawl by Stephen West, knit in String Theory Caper Sock. I did this six months ago. Yeah, it's a really nice warm shawl. Yeah, so thanks for holding. <laughs> Moving on to what's new. Um, I know a lot of you have seen Diane on Knittables talk about this book. Um, 50 Christmas balls to knit. They are, I, I saw her talk about it and I was like, oh, Fair Isle, since I'm on a Fair Isle kick and I'm loving doing that. Um, I ordered it. It arrived and I'm looking for the thing to show you. The thing I thought was just absolutely stunning and made me want to run out and buy yarn for this, which I did. I actually went to, um, Joant? No. Is that the one with fabric? Yes. I went to Joann's and, um, bought their Heart and Soul, whatever Red Heart sock yarn is. Um, I bought a skein in white natural color and then a skein of the red and come on there it is and some red ribbon and i'm going to make that right there can you see it it's like a instead of a wreath you would hang that on your door on your front door i'm going to make at least one for my mother and one for me although they've got it hanging on a door handle from the look of that but whatever i thought it was really cute the um the patterns in here are they're great I didn't want to review this book. I just wanted to say that I got it. I'm going to be knitting it. You're going to see uh, quite a few of these little red and white balls coming into the show in the future. So there you go. <laughs> and then also this week, actually yesterday, I got a package in the mail from Sheila D37, who is uh, one half of the Knit One Heart 2 podcast. And she sent Roland an adorable set. So, I don't know if you watch it or not, but this is the little hat, which will totally fit him. Thank you, Sheila. Um, it has cables, and it's like ribbed with cables, basically. It's adorable. I can't wait to put it on him. And then this gorgeous cabled vest. So, I don't know if this was part of her podcaster challenge. I don't think so. I think she just liked knitting cables, and so she did this, but it's so cute. I can't wait to put it on him and see him. <laughs> um, if I'm remembering right, it's Dreaming Color Classy, and it's adorable, and it's... I, I don't know what it is. There's something about getting hand knits from other people that makes me, for my boy, that makes me more excited than when I knit something for him. I don't know, it's just like, oh, I'm touched. Someone else thinks he's worthy of the time of hand knits. So thank you very much, Sheila. Um, I will be posting pictures, and you guys will be seeing him in these very soon. So I think that's it for this week. That's all I've got to say. Um, 
yeah. <laughs> I will talk to you again next week. And in the meantime, happy knitting and take care. Okay, bye. <laughs> there he goes. There you